So it's July and a lot of the predictions that we've been seeing from real estate experts and economists, they've simply been wrong. The plateau theory that prices will not continue to rise, but also will specifically not be falling, that's been proven false. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on in the real estate market right now, how you can still maximize your profit as a seller, and what to expect going forward. So it's July now, which means we have another full month of market data to analyze and pick apart. And that data from June is not very good for the people that are advocating for this plateau theory. Quite simply, it's not true. Prices are falling and we now have the data to validate this. Showing Time is a company that manages showings for buyers that are interested in seeing a home for sale. And they have great analytics tracking the activity across different listings and different markets. And what we're seeing is showing activity is down 45% year over year. So for every 10 buyers that looked at a house last June, today, there are only between four and five buyers looking at homes to purchase. And that's even more true for the open houses that we're seeing. A year ago today, we were seeing between 30 and 50 visitors at an open house in a three or four hour time period. And we could never have a minute of alone time, so to say, in the house because there were always at least one buying party looking at the home. Now, in that same three to four hour open house, we're seeing between two and five visitors. Many of them might also just be neighbors or looky-loos and not actual buyers with a pre-approval letter. So the activity and the demand side from buyers has just been completely wiped out from their highs of late last year. Now, the most concerning piece of data that I've seen is pending sales. The pending sales data simply measures how many homes are pending in a given geographical area in a given month. Now, in a normal balanced market, we see healthy seasonality. We all know that late spring, early summer is the busy season for real estate where most people are selling and buying homes. We also know that December and January are the slowest seasons of the year because people don't like buying homes during the holidays. And this has been true for literally a hundred years. What we're seeing right now is that the month of June had fewer pending sales than the last three winters. 2019, 2020, and 2021. Now, more concerning, June is not a normal month for the real estate market. June is supposed to be the hottest or the second hottest month of the year where we expect to see the highest number of penning sales. So not only are we not seeing the highest number of penning sales, we're seeing fewer penning sales in this month of June than we see in the slowest times of year over the last three years. Now to put that in perspective, in the month of June, we had fewer penning sales than we had in the month of April 2020 when the real estate market just froze because of the COVID-19 lockdowns that were initiated. Now, in terms of prices, price always lags last because we see front end activity and data first. For example, we see buyer traffic drop and then we see prices drop. We see pending sales volume drop before we see the closed sales. So it's gonna be a couple more months before we have rigid, accurate data on how much prices have dropped. But from what I and my team have seen in the market, we're already seeing value corrections between five and 10%, depending on the area. Some of the strongest markets that I'm seeing right now are the high-end custom home markets that have always had historically low inventory, but still have a lot of buyer demand to offset that increased inventory that we've seen over the last few months. Some of the markets that I've seen been hit the hardest over the last few months are the bedroom communities that serve commuters that have also been overbuilt by national builders who chose those locations because they offer affordable homes that first time buyers can afford. For example, Hemet, San Jacinto, even Menifee and Winchester that have a lot of new homeowners that bought affordable new construction homes over the last few years. Those are the homes that are being listed again and inventory levels are rising very rapidly and prices have come down as much as 10% already. So now let's put this in perspective because we haven't seen a bear market 
in over 10 years now, but realistically, it's been more like 14 years. So in July of 2012, the median home value in Southwest Riverside County was $285,000. By 2019, the median home value had already doubled. And since 2019, the median home value has gone up another 26% from that 2019 double. So in perspective, since 2012, home values have gone up by almost 300%, which has been completely, completely unprecedented. So in the grand scheme, if prices do drop by the more significant end of my prediction, which would be 20%, in the grand scheme, we're still in a great place equity-wise, and it's almost a necessary adjustment because the absurdity over the last two years of appreciation has not been backed by any real inherent value other than the creation of money through inflation and the fact that the dollars in circulation have also doubled in the last two years since the COVID lockdowns began. Now, the hard part about this market is that as a seller, you have to lead the market on its way down as well. So when prices are coming down, you have to list your home slightly below market value in order to meet the buyers at that current market value and not get left behind. What I mean by getting left behind is if you price your home too high when prices are going down, as time goes by, your home becomes more and more overpriced and buyers become even less interested in your home the more it sits on the market. So when you list your home for sale or if your home is already for sale, you need to make a strong price reduction that gets in front of the buyers working their way down so that you find a buyer, accept their offer, and they close that scroll before more time goes on and you bleed more equity away. So it's tough advice that I have had to do firsthand as well, but it's essential for keeping your days on market low and making sure you preserve and walk away with as much equity as possible. Now, I'm still here to serve every day. If you want to have a seller's consultation or a strategy session to talk about maximizing your proceeds in this market and still controlling your time timeline, reach out to me. Let's talk about the market in your specific neighborhood and how I might be able to help you maximize your profit as a seller. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.